Hey YouTube, Mike that tankless guy here. How are we all doing today? I hope we all had a safe and productive week and we're all being safe out there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, today's video, um, I, I mean it was going to be further on, but I, I figured let me get this video done with. This video is, I, I, be, I get a lot of questions about it, about the install as a specific part of the installation process of a tankless heater. But I also see a lot of photos and a lot of video on the social media platforms that I'm on, like Instagram, TikTok, and LinkedIn, on the condensate drain piping from a tankless heater. Now, we're, we, I do Navion, and we're gonna be showing Navion, but this goes for any condensing product. Anything that condensates needs to have a, a drain. And that drain needs to be done a specific way. Now, I'm telling you this from experience. I'm telling you this because we have done it the wrong way and it has caused problems. And this is done through thousands of either tankless heaters, boilers, or some type of heater that we installed even back in New York that if it's not done this way, and I'm gonna explain what's gonna happen. Every t condensing unit, like I said, condensates, it needs to be drained. The condensing pipe on most of these units are a half inch male thread. Plastic. Now I'm gonna say that word again, plastic. The condensate trap is some type of plastic or polymer. The tube that goes from the bottom heat exchanger into the condensate trap is most, the likely going to be a rubber tube because it is flexible to get it off if you have to do some type of maintenance. But notice that I'm saying everything is non-corrosive. So it's not going to um, corrode because condensate has a high acidity level and it's going to cause metal. I don't care what it is. It could be brass, it could be stainless, it could be something that you got from Mars and put it on. It's going to corrode it. Plastic is the only thing. Now, we use CPVC pipe, half inch CPVC. I know a lot of people use PVC. I prefer to use the CPVC because it just looks better. And then this basically is the bottle that we carry, it's loaded with the fittings that we need. Now, if we're doing multiple tankless units, we're gonna have more of these. Okay, what do we carry? I'm gonna dump it out onto the table. Let's make sure we don't roll off, which we did. All right, we're going to, we'll just turn this around. All right, where'd that, oh, there it is. Oh my God. All right, we keep, some pre-cut short pieces of PVC in it. We keep a, the T, a T, elbows, street L's, street 45s, 45s couplings. But the most important thing we keep is a female plastic CPV adapter, which we buy in a box of 100. Home Depot, Lowe's sells them. Most supply houses don't. It's got a, a, um, a, an O-ring inside of it or um, kind of maybe almost like a garden hose washer, but it's got a small washer inside of it to seal it. So what we do is we take one short piece. Now I'm gonna put it on the tankless so you can see it. And we put it into the female adapter. We put our T, we put a street L, we put another short piece and then our pipe. And I'll show you how to cut the end of the pipe. So this is our drain. It needs to be vented. It needs to be vented. Nice catch. I, and I'm going to say it again. It needs to be vented. I don't care how many years you have on the job. I don't care. You have to vent this thing you get a hydrolock inside of it, even though it's an open drain. Now, this could be attached to a condensate neutralizer. 
that neutralizes the condensate before it goes in the drain or wherever it's going to go. You still need to vent it. What's going to happen is it's going to hydrolock between the trap and this pipe. And it's going to cause the condensate not to drain out at the designed amount it needs to drain. It's going to back up into the heat exchanger. And in some cases, it will leak between the lower, upper and lower heat exchanger. And I've seen it. I've seen it hundreds of times. We are going to replace a heat exchanger on another manufacturer's, what they call a demand duo, brand spanking new. They did not vent it. And it caused the heat exchanger to leak. We vented it and thinking that it would be okay, but it wore out the gasket between the upper and lower heat exchanger. The, the unit is a $10,000 unit, not even counting the install, and we have to put a brand new heat exchanger in it. We didn't install it, but we have to fix it. So again, it is very important to put this T in. You don't need to go out and up above the tankless. All you need is this little vent that will vent air into the line. Now, also what it's good is if you have and live in an area that's cold. Let me just get this camera back into the other position here. Excuse me. If you live in an area that's cold, what I would suggest is move this out so it's a, just above the tankless over here so that you can pour something in it if the condensate line has frozen, like um, an antifreeze or something in it, or some type of uh, de-icer. You can pour in that and let it sit. That, but that's if you, but here in Florida, we do it the way I'm gonna show it. So let me, let me put this together underneath the tankless, and we'll take the camera off so you can see, you know, you. Put, just put some compound on it. It's got the rubber gasket. I've never had one that leaked. Put that in like that. And we're just going to put a short little piece in there for now so you can see the drain. We're going to take the camera off. Let me scoot around here. Get my hook oh, on the wrong side. Excuse me. Turn me around. All righty. And that's the way it's going to look, just like that. You see? Just angle it back away from the cold water, and that's the way it's got to look. That's all you have to do. This stuff is not expensive. It looks nice. This is the only way we do it is with the CPVC. All right, let me just get this back locked up here. Turn me around. And that's it. Now, if you have multiple tankless heaters, now in a lot of cases, our installs are on an outside wall, like here. So what we'll do is if we have two, three, four, five, whatever, we'll just poke every single line outside into wherever. Because, you know, go through the, um, into the dirt or wherever. But if you're going to, you can connect them together, but two tanklesses would need it at least an inch and a quarter line. So it's easier just to run separate lines out there. And then of course, bigger. Now, condensate neutralizers. If you have multiple tanklesses, you may have to get a box style neutralizer. It's a big one, like it's a hundred, it's a hundred gallon which is the flow rate of the neutralizer with a lot of the marble chips inside of it. It might have to get sunk in the ground, but that's all engineered with the installation. But no matter what you do, you have to vent the condensate drain at the unit. Not away from the unit, just the way I showed you, and you'll never have a problem. Now, when you go outside, what we do is when we go outside, we normally, when we penetrate outside the wall, you know, we put an escutcheon on, you know, we penetrate something like this with a pipe down to the floor. What you want to do 
is you do not want to just have a rounded end. Now, this is a BS cutter that I have here in the shop. It's, oh yeah, I did it, there you go. You want to cut that end, just like that. So basically, what you're doing is you're going to take your cutter, and again, I hope this thing cuts because this is not one we normally keep in the shop here, my, on my truck. So you want to put the cutter on an angle like that, okay, and then cut down to give you that 45. There's two reasons. One, it allows the water to flow out straight. Also, on a home, could be outside the house, so the gardener, some, a gardener, he's a friend of yours, he's going to doing your lawn. He sees it leaking, he can put a cap on it. So you're gonna prevent a cap from going on it. Now, this is the style. Now, of course, this is a male, but this fitting on a female side, and of course it's three quarter, but I wanna just show you the fitting. You're not gonna use a fitting like this. This, this is that, you know, lead-free style, stainless that they make. Um, it's gonna rot out. It's gonna rot out and it's gonna come apart, boom, right out, and that's it. I have seen uh, units with no condensate drain. Just now, every unit comes with a rubber cap just to pr protect the threads. I've seen, I've gone to units that are getting codes that leave the rubber cap on. They are, or they take the rubber cap off and they just let it drain. That's gonna spray out onto all of the piping, the valve kit, the electric, the gas, anything that's below it, and it's gonna rot it away, okay? So if you do it like this, you'll have absolutely positively no problem. All right? All right, YouTube, um, questions, my email will be below. Uh, if you're interested in my training class, again, message me in my email, and I'll give you the rates and, and we'll go over availability. Uh, I, the um, uh, uh, social media, I'll have my social media in all my description, my Instagram and my TikTok. Follow me. I've been doing a blog on TikTok where I've been showing, you know, bad installations. Because again, there's nothing wrong with the box, the unit, the box. When you get it, you need a truck, you buy it at a supply house. There's nothing wrong with that unit. They're all tested. If you install it correctly you'll have absolutely no problem and you'll give your customers no headache and you'll have no headaches. All right, YouTube? Again, thank you for all of the likes, the subscribes, the comments. Hit that notification bell. Like and share the video. And um, again, thank you very much for your support. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next week. You all be safe out there. Bye-bye now.